Ladies and gents, sometimes when things here in the UK get a little bit too crazy, a bit of context is important, isn't it? Keep things in perspective. It's a bit like when you're feeling a bit uh, sorry for yourself and then you're greeted with the visage of Tim, the guy that you used to know back in the day, you know, the guy that you used to go drinking with back when you were like 18 or 19. But now you see him, now you see Tim and Tim is not doing too well at all. You know, Tim is still very much moping around with his worn out jeans, you know, where the knees are sort of worn out. Still still the same clothes that he was wearing 20 years ago. Tim has got both long hair and no hair somehow. And he's still listening to Silverchair and Placebo. Like, even now, <laughs> even as people drive past him and scream out the window at him, they're like, it, it's not really teen angst anymore, is it, Tim? You know? <laughs> Tim makes you feel better about yourself. And ladies and gents, when we feel a little bit down about ourselves and the state of the United Kingdom with our corruption, our politicians, it's important to look at the, at the big picture, isn't it? It's important to remind yourself that things could always be much, much worse. <laughs> You know, because if you look further afield, look at America, man. Like, America used to be the world's greatest democracy. America used to be land of the free, the world's police force. And now America... Now America is the rest of the world's Tim, isn't it? Because just as we are rightly frustrated by things like, you know, the Tories dragging their feet to get to the election, just as we are outraged by their looting of the public purse, by their lies, by their obfuscations. Sometimes we've just got to pan out, look over at America and remember that things could be a lot worse. I mean, Tucker Carlson, for example, you know, he's one of the US's most famous journalists. <laughs> that word's doing a lot of heavy lifting there. But yeah, Tucker Carlson, shamed for telling lies for ratings, shamed for withholding the truth from his viewers because he thought that they might not appreciate being told what was actually the truth on a supposed news channel. <laughs> The, the most serious media scandal I, I think of recent memory because what it what these emails document essentially is fraud and its senior executives and hosts perpetrating a fraud on their own viewers that they knew not to be true. I mean that guy, the guy that compared Joe Biden to an authoritarian dictator, not Trump. <laughs> no, Trump's not the authoritarian dictator. This is Biden, apparently, was like Kim Jong-un or Saddam Hussein in Tucker Carlson's mind. Well, he's not only one of the US's most famous journalists, but also after having done his interview with Putin, which was, you know, widely mocked, and the subsequent uh, pro-Putin Moscow travel blogs <laughs> that he was uploading, where he's running around Moscow marvelling at how advanced their society is. Because you can... Uh, you gotta, you got to check your notes here because you can um, put a coin, like a token, into the trolley and then take the trolley to go shopping. Oh, and, and there's magnets on the escalator that stop the trolley from rolling away. Like, if you haven't seen his videos, man, go, go and check it. Like, John, John Stewart did, like, a sort of reaction thing. Go and check that out because that is excellent. But anyway, yes, that guy. Tucker Carlson. He has now clapped back at all of the criticism that he received from doing this Putin interview and the pro-Russia content that he put out thereafter. He's responded to the criticism and I, I want to take a look at it with you guys now. Are you ready? Let's do this. The idea that I'd be flacking for Putin when, you know, my relatives fought in the Revolutionary War. Like, I'm as American as you could be. I mean, the idea that I would somehow be betting for Putin? <laughs> All, all I did was say that Biden was an authoritarian dictator and uh, Vladimir Putin's Russia is an incredible place where everyone can afford all the food they want. It's clean. It's perfect. It's, it's, it's blowjobs for everybody. The idea that I'd be flacking for Putin. You know, the, the idea that's, that's somehow propaganda is just... I mean, I'm hurt by the mere suggestion. The idea that I'd be flacking for Putin when, you know, my relatives fought in the Revolutionary War. I love, I love that angle. That is, that is a solid angle right there. I mean, th this is how you know you're dealing with a top-tier journalist. Yeah? 
I reckon the American mosaic is on its way, Tucker. I mean, it's just ridiculous. My relatives fought in the Revolutionary War. I mean, just, just because your relatives did a thing, that doesn't mean that you also did the thing. <laughs> I feel like I shouldn't have to say this. You know, doesn't even mean that you believe the same thing as your relatives. I mean, we know that you think your viewers are morons. We know that. But could you give them a little credit? A little bit of credit in rubles, if not dollars, Tucker. My relatives fought in the Revolutionary War. I mean, my relatives fought in the First World War. You know, my granddad was a messenger in the second. But does that make me a, a patriotic war hero now? Does it? No, of course it doesn't. I'm the same cowardly sack of shit I've been every other day of my life. My relatives fought in the Revolutionary War. I mean, I guess what he's sort of getting at here, right, is that it would be unconscionable to his relatives, wouldn't it? To his family. Um, if he were to be perceived as some sort of patriotism turncoat, right? It would be unpalatable to his relatives. Uh, or their descendants, if he turned out to be a traitor. You know, like his relatives wouldn't have it. They wouldn't be having that at all. But, um, I mean, like, he's he's not an idiot. Like, he lives in the same America as the rest of them. <laughs> and he certainly wouldn't be the first or the only Republican who has lived through that Cold War period of the 1980s, but who would now soil his father and grandfather's graves by tacitly supporting Russia. I mean, he, he wouldn't be the only one. He wouldn't be on his own. I mean, take take a look at this bitch. Ukraine, would it give you any pause? I don't have a problem with Russia. I really don't. I Why? have a problem with Ukraine. They're corrupt. I think that people are just ridiculous that they think that Putin's such this enemy. He isn't doing anything. He just wants back what was his. But he invaded, he, he invaded, was his. he and invaded his Ukraine, That's fine. killing thousands of people. That's fine. That's fine with me. That's fine, guys. That is, that's fine with her. She, uh, she doesn't have a problem with Putin. I don't have a problem with Russia. You know, he just, he just wants what's his. He isn't doing anything. He just wants back what was his. Uh, and if Ukrainians die by the tens of thousands or millions, well, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine with me. I, I don't think Putin's a problem. I think Zelensky's the problem. Why do you think Putin's not the problem? He's the I, one that invaded I, Ukraine because, and has killed thousands of people. Because Putin uh, is trying to save his country from the likes of idiots like Zelensky and the elitists. The elitists. God. Like, I, I tell you what they should do with these Vox Pops, right? They should package them all up, get 50 or 100 of them, and they, they should package them up and market, to, market them and then sell them to new countries. Because somebody just invented a country and they're trying to set out their parliament and processes and institutions or whatever. They should sell them these Vox Bobs as part of a presentation when these people are trying to decide if they should have press regulation or not. <laughs> like they should be like, yeah, this, this is what happens if you spoon feed people with an IQ that matches room temperature. From the likes of idiots like Zelensky and the elitists. This is what happens when you mainline misinformation into them. They just consume it and regurgitate it. And then someone else hears that and then they take it and they shit it out. The elitists. And then someone else picks it up and consumes it and shits it out. Someone else. It's like a human centipede of populist misinformation garbage. That's fine. Yeah. Like, I don't think any of these people should have a newspaper or a TV set again in their lives, ever. Like, in this country, we still have the TV license, don't we? <laughs> well, a lot of people are like, we should get rid of the TV license. I'm like, oh, no, 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 we should keep it. But it should actually be like a proper license, like a driving license that you have to apply for and answer questions just to check that you're responsible enough to be able to handle the truth. So much Oh, but what about free speech aid? What about freedom of expression and free speech? Anybody should be allowed to say anything about anything at any time. And all of these people should be free to buy tickets to rallies and listen to it and consume it as they wish. What about free speech aid? Don't these people have a right to free speech? Idiots like Zelensky and the elitists. Mm, nope. 
speaking of uh, free speech, that was another thing that Tucker got in trouble for. It was this idea that he was glamorizing Russia, right? That whole kind of propaganda piece. Like, isn't it amazing? The food is so cheap. The subways are so clean. Like, he was so quick to celebrate Russia, but he caught a lot of flack for conveniently leaving out the fact that there is no such thing as freedom of expression over there. So, yeah, listen, like, ch check out what he has to say in response to that criticism. No, of course they don't have free No country has freedom of speech other than us. Canada doesn't have it. Great Britain definitely doesn't have it. France, Netherlands, these are countries I spend a lot of time in. <laughs> I mean, I am I am genuinely dumbfounded by the ignorance here. I mean, this this guy's supposed to be a journalist, is he? And he can't he can't fact check whether any other countries have trolleys that you put tokens in them. You know, he can't check if Russia is the only technological powerhouse that's managed to develop magnetic escalators. Is that beyond his ability? He can't get his head around economies of scale. You know, just because the food appears cheap to a traveling American doesn't necessarily mean that it is cheap food to the people who live and work in Moscow. It's just award-winning, steadfast ignorance here. And now he's like, well, nowhere has free speech. We're the only place that has it. Great Britain certainly doesn't have it. Great Britain definitely doesn't have it. I'm like, look, all right. Okay, Tucker, listen, how do you explain this? All right. <laughs> how do you explain this? Because here I am. Hi, I'm Aid. I'm sat here in Great Britain, apparently restricted in what I can or can't say. And yet I am miraculously able to sit here and say, Prince Andrew's a nonce burger. And the king, King Charles, is a tax-dodging twunt. Or maybe you like this one. Tucker Carlson is a tap-dancing tosser. Like, if Great Britain doesn't have free speech, if it's so much worse to be over here, then Tucker, can you riddle me this fella? How come so many of us are so glad we're here <laughs> and feel so much better for having looked at you lot? <laughs> Like, if there's no free speech in Great Britain, if it's worse to be in Great Britain, Tucker, how come you lot are the Tim?